Hey guys, Chitu Fahadens here for chapter 4 of module 2 in the Anamorphic Cookbook. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, here's some of what you've been missing. In this module's previous videos, we talked about the difference between anamorphic lenses and adapters, then the difference between consumer and cinema anamorphics. The previous chapter was all about focusing methods, and now we're here to talk about squeeze factors. Anamorphics can have different squeeze factors. The squeeze factor determines how much an anamorphic widens your field of view. The squeeze factor is based on the curvature of the lens's cylinders, and they mostly range from 1.33 to 2 times, save rare exceptions. Here, I'll talk about the powers you're likely to pick from, a little bit of their background, and a few lens options and some of their defining traits for each squeeze. The squeeze factor of your lenses affects how much anamorphic character will come through into your footage. How oval will bouquet look like? How wide will the picture be after de-squeezing? It will also affect your choice of sensor size and aspect ratio. To give you some good reference, Hollywood's sweetheart squeeze factor is two times, but there's plenty of other ways to go. The weakest type is 1.33. Actually, here's a misconception about it. A lot of people say 1.3 and 1.33 interchangeably, and that's not the case. Hawk's anamorphic lenses are 1.3 times. They're marked as so. Stretching their footage to 1.33 will make your picture marginally wider than it should be. Then we have 1.33, which is also not really 1.33, but 1.33333333 times, endlessly. And this also makes a small difference when de-squeezing the footage. The more threes you put in the fraction, the more accurate you are. But this tiny fraction actually affects more the way your computer will interpret the pixel values of that footage. For simplicity's sake, I'll shorten 1.33333333 times to 1.33. This squeeze turns a 16 by 9 sensor into 2.36 to 1 aspect ratio, just a little bit shorter than CinemaScope. Curiously, these came to be when TV standards were changing and 4x3 cameras needed to work for 16 by 9 screens. 1.33 does just that. Many of these older 1.33 adapters have serious limitations when it comes to focusing and image quality. They were designed for tiny sensors, and resolution wasn't so critical at 720p and under. Some examples of older 1.33 adapters are the Panasonic LA7200 and Century Optics. As explained in the previous video, these lenses have fixed focus and no proper way to adjust it on the fly. More recently, 1.33 has seen a revival with SLR Magic's Anamorphots, Lattice Anamorphics, and the Surrey lenses. 1.33 adapters are sometimes considered good beginner scopes because they require minimal extra gear and it's easy to imagine the de-squeezed picture since compression is so mild. They also tend to deliver very strong Panavision C-series-like sci-fi blue purple flares. The big downside is most of these have severe edge issues and bokeh stretch is quite subtle. So subtle that a lot of people claim 1.33 scopes don't have oval bokeh. Not true, but almost. When looking at Surrey's lenses, for example, we should take into account the focusing methods that we saw in the last chapter. Besides Surrey's mild 1.33 squeeze factor, the closer you focus using these lenses, the lesser your squeeze factor. So while 1.33 applies at infinity, at close focus, squeeze is even milder, more like 1.25 times, which is why I like to add some spice with an oval insert. From there, we step up to 1.5. Actually, let's make a quick stop at 1.42 times. Here's a very well-kept secret. Although Iskoramas claim to be 1.5 times anamorphics, they're actually all 1.42. Not only that, other lenses in the Isco lineup 
also share that squeeze, such as the ISCO Video Attachments Mark 1 and 2, as well as the ISCO Widescreen 2000. Long story short, it's an ISCO Rama 54 with a 1.33 stretch. Yes, I was wrong when I reviewed those. By knowing what I just told you, you can see that it's wrong too, can't you? Knowing this is key for properly de-squeezing them in post and on set, while pushing the 1.5 times setting will give you a slightly overstretched picture. Iskoramas are the gold standard when it comes to anamorphic adapters in terms of size, ease of use, weight, and image quality. They're pricey too, of course. After this surprise, we get to proper 1.5 times. That's where the Bolex molars are, along with a few Koas, Vistascope, and Yashikascope. In modern times, the Ivascope Mark III also caters to the 1.5 times crowd. This squeeze ratio also works great with 16 by 9 sensors, delivering a slightly wider 2.66 to 1 aspect ratio which I've grown to love over the original 2.39 to 1. No cropping required. Bokeh feels much squishier than 1.33, but not nearly as pronounced as two times. Considering 1.42 and 1.5 as a single group, Iskoramas, Bolex Molars, and the Ivoscope are the ones worth looking into. 1.5s are also the most overrated scopes. Since there are so few compared to two times and perform so well, people quickly get carried away in their prices. The next step in our squeeze ladder is 1.75 times and 1.8. Both these powers are the optimized take on shooting 4x3. 4x3 times 1.75 or 1.8 lands you very close to CinemaScope almost without cropping. 1.75 times are the Vintage Wave with the Baby Hypergoner, a super rare Koa 35 and the Isco in-flight, plus the early version of the Ivoscope, which aimed to replicate the Baby Hypergoner. 1.8s are present on Vazen's lenses and the Stronger Lattice Anamorphics 1.8. Their goal is to really maximize the sensor use of shooting 4x3. The 1.8 squeeze is seeing more attention from cinema lens manufacturers as well since the popularization of the Arri Alexa open gate mode, which records in 4x3 aspect ratio. You can find offerings from Cook at 1.8 times and Chameleon at even more specific 1.79 times, for example. From there, we are in two times land where the vast majority of adapters are. Very few of these were originally used for capturing images, but rather projecting pictures. They're reminiscent of old movie theater projectors, airplane projectors, home setups, Super 8 cameras, and a random variety of uses. Having an anamorphic adapter in front of the projector would optically de-squeeze the picture for the big screen, avoiding any film conversions and transfers that would reduce the image quality. Read any book on processing film and you will see how much detail would be lost in each copy. Two times is the classic anamorphic Hollywood look. That's where I'm expecting most of you to head towards when choosing your glass. Bokeh is super oval and due to availability, these tend to be the cheaper options among adapters. There are lots of variations though. Different sizes, different weights, tolerances, flares, and just performance overall. We'll get to that more specifically later on in module five. When used on a 16 by nine sensor, a two times lens will give you an absurd 3.56 to one aspect ratio that doesn't work very well for most practical applications. When shooting with the four x three sensor, two times lenses give you 2.66 to one. Remember my favorite aspect ratio. It gives you a little bit of room for cropping later if you want to finish your film in 2.39 to one cinemascope. The two times look is so relevant that even today, manufacturers stick to it. It doesn't matter that compression itself is no longer needed to maximize the film or sensor area. It's a visual style. 
Atlas chose the squeeze factor and focal lengths for their A set based on popular choices from vintage sets. In the next video, which is also the last chapter in this module, we'll look at renting versus owning gear. If you're enjoying this program, hit subscribe and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Same goes for questions and suggestions. Thank you so much for hanging out and I'll see you again next week. Shit to Fahadings, out. <laughs>